Paul, it's really great to talk to guys like yourself because I know you're hands-on with the machines, yeah. you program them, you set them, you get the best out of them. Today's uh, subject is the Nakamura range here from the Engineering Technology Group. Yeah. At Ashby Precision Engineering, you've got four machines. Can you tell us about the machines that you've got to start with? Oh, well, we have a, a Nakamura NTY3, as you can see behind me here, uh, a WT300 and uh, AS200 and an old WT150. You couldn't get a better mix of machines, could you? If you take all three of those, so let's start with this one. This is the NTY3, so you've got three Y-axis, three turrets, correct? Correct, yeah, that's correct, yeah. And then the WT300, what's that one? Uh, that's twin turret, twin spindle, but a single Y-axis on the upper turret. But it's a much bigger machine oh, as well? Much bigger, yeah, it's an 80 mil bar capacity. And then we go to the AS200, which is a smaller machine. Smaller machine, single turret, Y-axis, and 65 mil, uh, mil bar capacity. And then the final one, the WT150, traditional twin turret, twin spindle. Yeah, that, it's very, just a smaller version of the 300, uh, two inch bar capacity, single Y-axis on the upper turret, and sub spindle, of course. You've got experience with Nakamura, with the range. What, what's your, in a couple of sentences, sum up what you think about the machines? Uh, Nakamura in general. You say, oh, that very finely uh, made machine, hand built, um, very, very reliable, uh, very accurate. They never give us hardly any problems at all. That was probably four sentences, but it was ah, worth it. Was now, worth it. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's have a look at these parts here, because this is one of the ones you've been machining on, the NTY3. Can you tell us about how, how you machined it, the cycle time behind it? And um, yeah, we've made these before uh, originally on the, the 150 in billet form, obviously because we couldn't get the bar through the spindle. Um, they took about eight and a half minutes that, in, in that way of doing things, and of course, this manual intervention with the la uh, labour putting it in and out of the sub spindle. Um, but we managed to do it here around about six minutes, complete off and deburred as well. What are the operations that you're doing on here? I can see turning, drilling, milling. Yes. Uh, main spindle end is to machine this, something that we can uh, hold in the sub spindle, and in the sub, whilst it's doing all of the, the first, we're milling this profile and bang, uh, putting in the, uh, the counter balls in the back. And, uh, it works perfectly, it really does balance out well. Is that stainless steel? Stainless, yes, 303 stainless steel, yes. Is a lot of the work you do on these machines stainless? Stain, stainless steel, 304 and 303. We do some titanium, a little bit of um, uh, nitronic, but um, it, primarily it's stainless work, yes. And it, when I say it's an NTY3, it's got three Y-axis and three turrets, people might go, yeah, yeah. But what does that actually do for you as a, as a programmer, as an operator, and as someone that is challenged to get these parts off quicker? What do you like about the configuration? Well, having the three turrets and the formation of the Y-axis as well, in fact, I find it quite easier to program it because you, you're not, there's so many different ways you can make the part on the machine, whereby when you've got a single Y-axis, you're very much tied to the way you can do it. But on, on this particular machine, it, it's easier because you've got a lot more flexibility. So you've got lots of options of where to do different operations at wherever you want. Yes, that's, that's dead right. Yeah, the way you go, where you, you think of the job in your head, how you're going to do it, and you can pretty much do it on here. If you come to program that though, then does that not make it complicated to program? Um, not really. I, I tend to lay it out in operations on a piece of paper and work my way through it that way. Um, I find it's quite quite simple really it's yeah. good it needs Sorry. to be yeah <laughs> let's now go to i, I want to go to the uh, the as200 because that's a smaller yeah. machine so let's yeah. go have a look at that yeah. yeah so this would be the smallest of your nakamura machines why did why did you buy this one paul um primarily because we do um the, the smaller quite the less complicated parts and and when you look at this machine as well, you've got the Y-axis in a very small footprint, haven't you? The AS200 is a, is a dinky machine, but still well-constructed, but with a Y-axis. Still a 65 mil bar capacity uh, with a chuck. We have a chuck and a collet system for it. Um, we didn't have a tail stop with this, this particular version, but you've got uh, 32 mil plus or minus on the Y-axis, which is quite, quite extensive. You've got a bar feed as well for your automation, parts, catcher, parts yes. kit. Yes, yes, yeah, we have that, yeah. Uh, how many hours would you be running this machine in a, in a day or in a week? Uh, we, we, we try and probably to get around about 16 hours a day if we can, possibly out of it if we can. Okay, great. I want to move on to the, the bigger one, the bigger one of the four, the, the WT. Way, Let's go. Yeah. So, so this is the, the biggest machine that you have from Nakamura. Tell us uh, for our audience the size of the machine and chuck size and the sort of working envelope that you can, you can do on here. Okay, yeah, well, it's a 10-inch chuck machine, 80mm uh, bar capacity, Y-axis, 
um, 80 mil, 40 mil plus or minus. That's quite powerful. big. Oh yeah, yeah, it's very powerful. Box slides, so it's uh, you can take a big cut on it. And when you say powerful, what, what do you mean by the powerful spindle? spindle yeah, spindle horsepower on it. You can take because you're cutting stainlesses and various materials. Yes, yeah, stainlesses, Swedish iron, to take some power to machine it. So let's have a look at some of the parts that you're making here then, Paul. Okay, here's one of them, yes. This is the speedboat, uh, quick release for a uh, uh, steering wheel for a speedboat. Oh, yeah, I, I recognise that from my speedboat as well. Oh, you've got one as well, have you? Yeah. <laughs> and what, you, you, you did have another one you were going to show us as yes, well. Yes, yes. This is um, another part we, we, we manufacture. Uh, I don't know what it does. It's some part of some secret sort of setup. I think what's, what, what we, we're demonstrating here is the sort of size of the, the, the billets. But yes. you, you're bar feeding this as well, though, aren't you, this one? Yes, this is an 80 mil bar feed we can, uh, we can use on this particular machine. And we find that very useful. And with this type of machine, you're doing the milling, you're doing the turning, you're doing all the threading operations, all, all in one hit still? All in one go, yeah. It comes off completely deburred as well into the parts capture. And when you guys start researching here at Ashby, the machines that you're going to select, are you always looking to get that, that sort of unmanned operation? Is that key to you? That's paramount, really, I think. Uh, we, we always look for the fact that we can run the machine totally unmanned and we know that it's going to produce a good part. And is there a case where you, you come in in the morning to... Um, to finish parts in the in the parts catcher is that what you're after in a lot of instances yeah. oh yes yes that's, that, that's what we tried to do we tried to try to achieve that if we possibly can yeah invariably it does work and, and, and if you had to look at the new control systems from nakamura as well you've got things like nakamura nurse and various uh, features on the control which are there to help you do, do you like the operation and the programming i know you do a lot offline but do you, you like using them at the control too um, I find that the control is very, very easy to use, very, very helpful, especially if you have a problem with it. It's all the machine. There's all the diagnostics and all the manuals on board that you can just look through to find what the, what exactly what's up. So very intuitive is a word I've heard before. When it comes to you summarising, I know we haven't looked at the WT150, but that's a twin turret, twin spindle machine. The four machines that you have here from Nakamura, how would you finally summarise the success of, of all of those together, Paul, here at Ashby Engineering? Um, but primarily that we have very, very little downtime in the machines. They run and run. And um, that's really important to us because when they're not turning, they're not making any money.